So you can start on thinking on what would you like to ask <laughs> or comments you have on what we've just seen. When I was uh, told I, I or invited to, to chair this uh, architecture, cultural production, I immediately thought about what, what we do and what we're doing because uh, we are also part of that uh, agricult uh, architecture, culture production. And I actually thought about someone that once told me, why are we still doing this? And it was after um, a quite tough um, production in Venice, always Venice, and at the end of it, the curator, she was really uh, tired about it, and a few months after she told me, we should stop doing these biennales and triennales. And this is something that keeps running in my head every time we have a triennale, every time we organize something in Venice. And so this is a kind of a disclaimer first. <laughs> but uh, what I was thinking about while you were all presenting your um, projects is that most of us, if not all of us here in this room, we work on architecture, cultural production. And a few of us, at least, uh, either because of the resources we use or the voice we have, we are responsible, or have a quite uh, high level of responsibility in what we display, in what we put out to the world. So my question would be, if, uh, if any, or how, how responsible you feel and if you ever think about it, how responsible you feel about what you produce as uh, architecture culture um, and impact that it, that has to the audience you you have. So it's mainly about responsibility. On I don't know if it was clear enough. <laughs> I can answer to this, uh, making uh, reference specifically to the case of the unfolding pavilion, of course. And what I must say is that the very nice story that we are, are, uh, have the possibility to now tell about the social housing uh, being abandoned and so on is something that we found. We didn't look for it. But of course, from the moment in which we found this story, we understood that the value of the um, pavilion would be much more in uh, being here today. I mean, the kind of... Uh, uh, events of communications uh, that you are allowed to do after the end of the pavilion. Everything is documented, that there are articles here and there, but of course you don't solve the problem of social housing by doing an exhibition of three days, not by far, and we don't pretend that we are solving any problem. But yes, you can transform something which is uh, uh, inside, is part of the culture of Venezia, or a general problem in Italy, social housing, in a topic of discussion by means of an exhibition and the documents that the exhibition leaves. In this sense, I think it's a, for this I feel responsible, I mean, sharing the word of this uh, situation going on that maybe architects can think about since we uh, tried to do something with it during this uh, occasion. In this sense, I love biennales as a, as a general idea because they allow to concentrate attention in a very strong way and without the Biennale, we would not be, we would not be able to do this kind of projects. Uh, so I think that Biennales, of course, they can become problematic also from the economical point of view. They become commercialized, but they also concentrate momentum with very bright minds. So to, to always know this ambiguity and play with it, I think it's uh, important. Uh, what I would like to, to add is that the Unfolding Pavilion is a sort of a parasite to, to the Venice Biennale. And perhaps to other biennales as, as well, because uh, we are not part of the biennale machine. You, you all know that uh, the Venice Biennale is like a huge business. Uh, it uh, has a lot of contracts. It obliges you to, to work with uh, certain contractors uh, in installing uh, and this installing the exhibition. So uh, we, we just uh, uh, add uh, our our work in the context of the Biennale. We are not part of, of, of the Biennale. Uh, and uh, yeah, we, we just uh, parasite the, the, the main, uh, the main uh, event. So in a sort of way, we are also criticizing the Biennale uh, mechanism as well. This way, okay. Um, our work uh, has a very 
a huge responsibility because we have a great connection with the involvement of the citizens and uh, for this reason we feel it. <laughs> we feel the, responsible, uh, re the responsibilities about that and uh, also uh, we um, made, uh, uh, we believe that, that we create uh, also another way to do a political message about that because uh, is a, for us uh, to use a dismissed building is to underline something that is uh, uh, usually the city hide, no? The public administration hide. And uh, uh, this kind of, of involvement of the citizens is uh, um, to convert uh, this kind of uh, process, not hide, but open. Uh, and for us, it's very important, this kind of message. And uh, at the same time, we decided to open a multicultural center for this reason, to have uh, a new idea and uh, to make another opportunity to do something in other way. And uh, our multicultural center is uh, open. There is a lot of association that you work with us and uh, also the, the project that I, uh, I saw before um, is not uh, only our, our project, but uh, is uh, for all the community and also other uh, associations engaged in it. And uh, for us, it is very important this way to work, and uh, for us, it is a, a very great, uh, and uh, we are honored to have these uh, responsibilities. Um, I, I will start uh, with a question that you made uh, that resonates a lot in my head, uh, like, what are you doing this? Um, in this case, I think in, in Biblioteca Abierta uh, is one of the most rewarding uh, projects uh, for me because it's uh, the one that reached a, a, a bigger audience. Like the other projects, and, and I'm glad that I showed them because I wasn't planning to show them, and then I asked Milan like a few hours, uh, an hour ago to add them. But the other projects somehow are more like to specific students or, or a community of art, but it's a very specific community. But in Biblioteca Abierta, Free Library, I think there is a, a wider audience that, that gets very excited, that enjoy the project, and that's extremely rewarding. But at the end of the day, like, uh, there is, this is a project that I was developing in Venezuela, and the institution has no resource to, to finance this project, so it was completely like non-profit, like to call for the book. It's like, uh, almost like one month of working, collecting the books and then displaying it. But, in the, but the, the other projects for me are more interesting because it is a new research every time, something that I do like for me, for my own research, but the other project is already done, they succeed. So now like, this is how I'm, my challenge, how to make it sustainable, but also the answer is like, uh, is like kind of a responsibility. So I, I don't get anything with this project uh, because like uh, as a creator, I think it's already done and resolved, but I think it's the, the one has more potential than any of other kind of research that I've been developing. <laughs> About your question with the, with the Biennale Triennale, why do we even need it? What do we need it for? Um, because the interesting thing is there's so much information out there in the world and actually we don't need those events to get the information with internet, with everything. But one thing that we sort of saw in our work um, with, the, with the video journalism, for example, also when we went to Venice, we talked to um, Sir Peter Cook and asked him, why are you here? And he said, oh, it's like a big cocktail party. You meet all of your friends. And I think this is the important thing about um, events or exhibitions that, that, that every one of us, I think, does because it brings people together and people then talk with each other and by this generate new ideas. So I think this is why um, those events are important. Also for us, when we show our um, video documentaries, because they're all on YouTube and on television, but people all, all still come to the cinema because this is where they meet other friends. A lot of them got internships because they sort of met architects. And I think this is something that we're not allowed to forget with all this digital Opportunities that, um, opportunities that we have, that like the physical presence of people still brings a lot of new ideas and sort of 
we see our our content that we create for the event as sort of like a bait to get the people there and then create new things for themselves. So I think it's gonna be more important than ever to have events to bring people together. Um, I'm thinking of. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, <laughs> I was like a flamenco. No, I was thinking, like, I'm thinking about your question about responsibility, and I also am thinking about irresponsibility. Um, I mean, the three projects I work and I showed today are definitely, you could see, there's different capacities, but all, all they, they all have this kind of infiltration component, and I think that's how I always operate, so I don't still. I mean, that's why I'm here somehow, because I would love to produce a huge triennial or a biennial. I'm not sick at all, I never did it. But I'm saying, like, the idea I like, start, like, infiltrating different, you know, five years in this, like, dormant space in the middle of downtown Manhattan that I didn't know what Fluxus was at the time, or like, when I went to program and curate the incubator, expecting the directors to give me, uh, you know, direction that never happened, or even, like, when I... I was an ASU producer in my long opera and having the chance to work with this amazing, huge, uh, or this like, you know, huge um, studio and, and, and someone like Liz Diller, but also convincing her that, you know, New Jersey is also New York. So I think those kind of infiltration and um, um, responsibility is also in a way connected with the responsibility of not knowing very much what I'm doing. Uh, and I will say responsibility goes until I feel the people that are above me get tired, want to fire me. Thank you. Can I just give one? So. Um, thank you very much. I, I guess my, the, what I was thinking while you were all presenting was the kind of common thread of understanding architecture as a form of cultural production. And most, most um, uh, particularly uh, the fact that you are talking about the backstage. I mean, with the Miss TV, you are actually framing it as architecture backstage, but um, understanding the backstage, not only what's happening behind the scenes, but also the backstage as form of unincorporation to the architectural, let's say, system of, or to the more formal f form of our cultural production. And, I, and I, as you were going along, I was thinking how this unincorporation actually is a form, as an act of resistance. It is an opportunity, is a struggle, like when you don't have the budget, when you don't have the official support of the authorities, when you don't have the big names and then you want to go and know what's happening behind. Um, but also when you don't have the infrastructure, which I guess biennales, trinales, and opportunities like that offer for us to either exhibit, to show, to demonstrate, to build, to communicate, to network. So I was thinking if you can comment on this idea of unincorporated forms of cultural production in architecture. I don't know if I understand you. Can I, yeah. can you explain a little further? I guess when and I have to start. I, don't want to answer. I guess um, when somebody is not in the front stage, is not doesn't have the conditions okay. to support formal conditions to support. You're not architects are not unionized. They are not parts of corporations. They are not. They don't have most of the times or or the things you are talking about. Depends where. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Depends <laughs> <where>. <laughs> but in the things you were talking about, it was more about the backstage. It was more about finding this kind of. But I think ways that, of operating that come, at the backstage. But that come where you come from. I mean, it's, it's, I think it's a, it's a huge, I mean, it's a very, um, it could be a very extended uh, answer. I think it had to do with who you come from and where, uh, what, what you, I mean, what were your opportunities, why you moved and where, and why you want to pursue the career. And also, I know in my sense, and I feel a lot of, of this project here, and, um, and most of the projects are today, like, I think we're all here trying to expand architecture to a wider public and audience. So, you know, to remove that idea that an architect's an elitist, you know, profession, and it's very expensive, and why you have to pay this guy to sign, you know, the drawings, like, what country? So, you know, like, the more the people know, the more we can all, like, I'm not sounds kind of cheesy, but, like, fight for a better space for all of us. <laughs>
And I think that's where we are here, and that's why I, I bet you start doing this project, you know. I mean, we would love to listen to the backstage story later, but I mean, that's what we all gather in this, is this room, you know, in a way, how can we connect and interact with each other? That's very hard in the field of architecture. I mean, and I will say also in another layer, like cultural production have a huge history, the same as triennials and biennials come all from the art and cultural world, and architecture still so, so many countries, I don't think it's the case in Europe in general, but coming from South America, still it's not considered a cultural um, discipline, you know? And there's so many things, that we're not in the, we never, I mean, the newspaper have to publish a specific supplement on architecture when you have a house in the front and the list and the cost of materials on the back. There is no a single architect writing in any part of the main newspaper. And that's a problem. And then that's, I think, I'm doing what I'm doing. And I think that's what a lot of people are finding this tiny opportunity. There is some eager inside of you. You say, we can change things, you know, and we can build them also, you know. I try to answer fast to your issue of non-incorporated. I mean, in one way, it's what you get when you don't have an institution behind. And then I think what's, I mean, I love the condition when you have to work facing a lot of limits that usually you wouldn't face if you have a lot of budget and an institution and so on. Because when you have limits in every field of production, then you start to invent solutions. So therefore, the way in which we work is very much conditioned by the fact that we have to overcome limits which are in, in a way self-imposed because maybe we could become we could find someone who's really good in, in uh, crowdfunding and then we don't have the problems anymore but we don't we are lazy therefore since we are lazy and we always arrive late to things we have to find uh, alternative paths but i'm not saying that this is the only way you should do culture of course also the official way is really nice i mean actually i, I wish i could sometimes avoid all the stress which comes with not knowing how you are actually going to do the pavilion this year which is what happens every two years to us but um, until the very end to be honest so i mean but, but this is what happens you, know, you experiment because you have no other way if you don't you don't go anyway uh. We are an independent association and we work in an independent way. Uh, the next year, it could be the first time that we go at Biennale, as we are invited, but that's it. Uh, we work to, together and uh, about uh, ourselves, and that's it. And also, uh, we found uh, uh, the, the money to do our project with open public call. And uh, we are very, very great team to do that. But uh, we found uh, our money in our, uh, ourselves. Uh, we, and uh, uh, this kind of condition is permit us to uh, do anything that we want and uh, in our idea. And for this reason, uh, and for this reason, uh, we uh, work a lot with uh, the owner, of the private uh, building, for this reason, because uh, we want to have an independent idea and uh, to go in, uh, in our way. Can, can, can I just poke the bubble a bit from, from the other direction? Um, I have a really short question. It's something we've been asking since we started doing the um, Archie Futures projects, uh, books for, for this um, you know, for the creative exchange. Oh, it's got even louder. Um, how effective are your projects in terms of getting the public across the thresholds? I also think it's really important to hear about failure and, and how, how much of your projects actually got how many public involved, how many people came, how, or how many didn't come or weren't involved in what you were doing. I, I can answer that because I think uh, that's what I was uh, also answered to, to her. Uh, that I agree with you that we need to expand somehow like the culture of architecture, but I disagree in the, that the solution, uh, I don't agree with the solution that is like the unions. I think it's the opposite. Like we always, uh, yeah, 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 okay. Okay, but uh, what I was just planning to say is, uh, uh, is like, like we are always talking about uh, like to be united, but maybe that's the problem that everything is for architects. So I think we need to address other people, um, and that's what I found uh, like by chance uh, with a, a free library that 
everyone are interested in books. So somehow so it was a very uh, powerful project to, to reach another audience. Um, and somehow, like, uh, I find the possibility to connect with art and architecture, but like reaching another uh, audience. And somehow, uh, it's a project that people demand, and that is why we are still uh, were doing it, even it was so much effort, because people were asking like for another one. So even we, in, uh, it wasn't not sustainable, it comes from also from the need, and also it was uh, uh, repeated many times because of the audience somehow. Uh, like like a, a place where uh, um, there is not visited, it could be like. 300 people in three hours. But this is very important for, uh, also for Venezuela, and, I'm, and I apologize for talking about Venezuela, but it's a very particular situation because uh, we don't use public space because it is unsafe, because, because the, the cities are different. So like this kind of a small effort have a lot of meaning in these countries. And, and, and I think that's also why you agree, because uh, I think that's why many of these uh, projects come out from Latin America because uh, where these projects in other countries are a study from theory of contemporary art or contemporary practice, we are like coming from them just from the needs. I mean, how we have to, to feel these things, how important is that? Because you never spoke about the content of the exhibitions. So how important is the content, the things you display? Or is or we have to agree that it's only the event that makes the, the, that makes the meaning of things? Because you, you didn't tell basically anything about yeah, what people would come yeah, to we see had, in the Yeah, we had to, yeah. to edit uh, a lot uh, for the 10 minutes uh, long presentation. Uh, so we focused on, on the on the production level, yeah. But the uh, content is, of course, the the main drive of of the exhibition. Yeah. Uh, we we didn't talk, for example, that uh, we managed uh, for the second half only pavilion to also uh, bring uh, a lot of uh, original uh, uh, drawings and uh, and models from the from the Ginovale archive, uh, and. Uh, 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 we managed to, 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 to do that because uh, Davide is friends with, with Pietro Valle and, and he brought the, the model uh, himself in there and uh, otherwise we couldn't have uh, uh, had the means to, to pay for the insurance and, and the crates and whatever. But uh, to speak about the, the numbers, to, to answer your question, at the first unfolding pavilion we had 300 uh, roughly 300 uh, visitors at the Vernissage, and the total attendance was 600, 700 people. And at the second edition, we probably had uh, doubled uh, the, the attendance with 500, 600 people at the Vernissage. And yeah, uh, we tried to involve the residents as much as possible. Uh, uh, we even uh, produced a documentary film uh, with uh, small uh, interviews with, with the residents. Uh, we uh, placed artworks in the common spaces. But uh, the residents, uh, seeing so many architects uh, involved uh, in there, probably felt a, a bit shy. So, so, so they, they didn't came in the first days, but after that when they, I mean, Probably they, they felt it was a too professional event and they didn't want to, yeah, maybe you can add. I would really like to answer to both questions fast. I, I'll, be try, I'll try to be as fast as possible. Regarding your uh, question, I think one, one thing I bring with me from this experience of uh, the Judeca is that in the uh, weeks preceding the, um, the vernissage, I, I was talking quite a lot with the people in Abitin. We had uh, neighbors, uh, people who became our friends. I'm still in contact with some of them. And 
And I remember they were basically, uh, when I was asking them about the building, their 99% of the times they were complaining about the building. They thought it was an ugly building, it was a, had a lot of problems uh, because of the typology, and of course the preservation state was lamentable according to them and so on. These very same people, uh, after the uh, vernissage, after the installations were shown uh, at night, especially with the lights and so on, would come back to me uh, and some of them really told me, I feel so lucky I live in a building by uh, Gino Valle, I discovered uh, uh, the importance and so on and so forth. What I'm trying to say simply is that the change of perception of the very same thing can actually trickle down to the people who live in that place. So they used to say, they told me, we, have, uh, we used to have barbecues all together and parties in the common spaces, but we got old, we don't do that anymore. You brought that back to us and I feel like I'm, I'm young again. I don't want to be cheesy, I'm just saying that some activities can activate some ways of rethinking the way in which people live, also the very space in which they live, and I think this is a good uh, thing which happened. On the other hand, talking about failures, we delivered the apartment in time, we gave it exactly how we were supposed to give it, and as far as I'm concerned, I hope now things have changed, but uh, I went to check the situation three months ago in, uh, in Judeca. The apartment was still empty. It had a plate uh, which uh, wrote that the uh, apartment has been refurbished with money from the European uni commun com uh, community, which is not true. We spent University of Innsbruck uh, actually uh, spent the money from the, for the refurbishment, which, yeah, they put an interphone, uh, which is uh, the new thing that, which was in the apartment, because otherwise it was exact, exactly as we left it. So it could be that for the moment, uh, what was the real meaning, let's say the, the, the practical meaning for, of the exhibition, which was to give back to a family the, the apartment, is not yet happening, but this is not our fault, I have to say, but I think this is a failure point of our exhibition as far as I'm concerned. And on the other hand, I mean, um, the topic of the exhibition is always the building itself. Then we change the uh, pool of people to source uh, the, the production. And for us, this is important because uh, architecture is a strange thing to put inside of exhibitions because you never see the building, but always a representation. But if you do the representation inside of the building, you generate a loop which, which we think is interesting. Is it working? It's nice to know, it's nice to know that the European Union is funding interference on apartments, but uh, I was told 10 minutes ago that we had to close. <laughs> Maybe we can, uh, because we are uh, almost half an hour behind schedule, so we should go for refreshments and maybe think about the impact of our cultural productions, if not measured by numbers, by other ways of measuring, measuring it like an apartment that became... <laughs>